Hi, I'm Dr. Evan Matthews. I'm here at Montclair State University in the Exercise Science Lab to show you how to use skin fold calipers in order to estimate body fat percentage. Alright, so there's several types of skin fold calipers out there. Uh, the most commonly used ones are going to be the Lane calipers, and that's what we're going to be using today. But you might also see the Country Technology type calipers or the Harfenden calipers. Both of those are used in different uh, institutions worldwide. But again, the Lang is the most common ones, and that's what we're going to be using. Regardless of what kind of skin fold caliper you're going to be using, you're going to have some sort of lever arm that's going to allow you to uh, open up the caliper. And when you do that, you're going to see that the, the dial that's reading off millimeters is going to change. All right, and so that's essentially how this technology works. All right, so you're going to uh, grab the person's skin and you're going to apply the calipers onto that skin and measuring how thick the fold of that skin is. All right, so when you're doing this, I recommend that you try to grab with a C shape to your fingers um, so that your fingers match the shape of the calipers because most of these calipers have a, a C type shape to them. All right, so naturally most people are going to use more of a V type shape to their fingers when they're pinching, um, but in doing so there's sort of different levels of thickness to the pinch and sometimes you'll have people that don't go uh, deep enough in with the, their pinch so they're not close enough to the body of the individual and so because of that I generally recommend you pinch like a C and it's very easy everybody always seems to pinch in the right spot doing that. Alright so practice with the C the exception to this would be if you have long fingernails you're not going to be able to do a C type shape of your hand so you're going to have to use the, the other the V type shape. When you're doing skin folds I recommend that you hold the calipers in your right hand and you pinch the, the person's body with your left hand. Alright so if you take the calipers you hold them out so that the dial is facing up towards the ceiling and you put the your left hand the one you're going to be pinching with above the dial not below but above the dial with the pinky facing up towards the sky all right so that is my recommendations for how to do this uh, technique all right so a vertical skin fold is going to look like this with the pinky up towards the sky a diagonal skin fold which is the next most common uh, direction for the skin folds is going to be just tilting like this all right so this is vertical this is diagonal most textbooks there are no horizontal sites you're never going to be doing anything like this so this position or this position. Those are the only two positions you should need for this test. All right, so when you go to pinch somebody, make sure that you pinch with your hand before applying the calipers. All right, if you apply the calipers and then uh, try to pinch with your hand, you're not gonna be getting all the fats. Also, make sure that when you pinch, you do a really nice big pinch. So go ahead and grab a little of the muscle with your pinch. And what I do is I sort of pull away. So grasp this, the, the tissue and pull away and you're going to feel uh, the muscle slide out from your fingers most of the time. And so what it kind of feels like is almost like a wet fish, a wet fish sliding out from your hand. All right, so once you feel that, you know you have all the fat and skin and none of the muscle. So that's what I generally recommend. So really big pinches, pull away, let the muscle pull out of your hand. All right, by doing that, you'll get all the fat, which is the idea. Um, also, make sure that when you go to pinch the person, that you pinch, then apply the calipers, and then pull off the calipers, and then let go of the pinch. If you pinch the person, apply the calipers, and then let go of the hand that's pinching, what often will happen is the calipers will sort of slide off of their skin and scrape them, and it really doesn't feel good, plus you're not going to get good measurements by doing that. What you need is at least two measurements per site that are within two millimeters of each other on the dial. Right, if you're more than two millimeters away from each other uh, of, for a single site for the measurements, then you're going to do another round uh, of at least the measurements where you didn't have a lot of uh, reliability of your measurements. All right, so again, two different measurements at the same site within two millimeters is the goal, um, however many rounds that takes, but make sure that you don't go to the same spot over and over again in a row. The reason for not doing that is sometimes the, the fat has a little bit of mobility and it can kind of sort of ooze out away from the calipers and make your numbers get smaller and smaller with each pinch that you do. On that note, you also want to be pretty quick with this. So you're going to pinch the skin, apply the calipers, and you want to measure that dial or read off that dial as quickly as you can. Usually within a second, two seconds at most because again that fat has a little bit of mobility and it will kind of ooze out from the, from the calipers and you'll see that the numbers get smaller and smaller and smaller if you don't make the measurement quickly enough. 
When doing the skin fold measurements, make sure that the muscles in that area are completely relaxed. If they're tense, it's going to alter the measurement that you're doing. Uh, so don't allow them to flex or uh, use any sort of weight bearing muscles in that area. For the purpose of maintaining consistency across measurements and uh, across sort of time points, let's say you're measuring someone's uh, skin folds in order to assess body fat percentage today, and then again six months from now, you want to do it as similar to those uh, as possible between those two different dates. All right, so because of that, um, by convention, we only use the right side of the person's body. So all measurements are going to be made on the person's right side. With the exception of somebody that has an unusual anatomy where um, their right side and their left side are uh, vastly different from each other. So if somebody has a, a, a deformed limb or something like that, then you don't want to measure on the deformed limb. You want to measure on the more typical limb. All right, so there's different equations out there that use different arrangements of skin folds in order to calculate body density and then eventually body fat percentage. All right, so we're going to be using the seven site uh, calculation that is the most common calculation out there. Uh, so it uh, has seven different places on the body that you're going to be pinching in order to get sort of an overall sense of how much body fat somebody has underneath their skin. All right, so uh, the three and the five site equations are also very common. So the fewer the sites that you use, the more likely you're going to either miss the sites where they carry the most of their body fat or only hit the sites where they carry lots of body fat. And so that's going to skew your numbers uh, one way or the other. All right, so the more sites you do, uh, potentially the more accurate your measurement's going to be. However, I will say that there's not a huge difference between a three, five, and seven site test in, as far as the uh, accuracy is concerned. The main reason we're going to be doing a seven site skin fold uh, in this video is because if you can do the seven sites, you can easily do the three or five site methods. So the seven sites has all of those sites involved plus some more. Um, you might see a few other sites out there in different textbooks that we're not going to be going over here. Specifically, you might see a bicep or a, um, a calf site. Um, or maybe some other ones that I'm just not aware are out there. There are additional sites above the seven we're going to be going over, but again, those are much, much more rare than what we're going to be showing you here today. In order to make sure that you do all of your measurements in the exact same spot each time when you're cycling through, we're going to put a little marker dot, uh, and so we're going to assess where the location should be, and then you're just going to pinch where that marker dot is every time. The tricep skin fold site is going to be halfway between the olecranon process in, of the elbow and the acromion process of the shoulder, and it's going to be on the midline on the back of the arm. All right, so midline of the back of the right arm, and this is a vertical fold. The chest skin fold site is the only one that is different between males and females, and the difference is pretty small. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to look for the armpit, and you're going to look for the nipple of the individual. All right, so if you can't see the nipple, uh, for instance, if they're, uh, they're wearing a sports bra for a female, uh, you're going to uh, estimate where that would be, and you can basically assume that it's in the center of the right side of the chest um, at the bottom of the chest. All right, so either way, again, you're going to look for the armpit and the nipple. For a male, you're going to go halfway between those two, and you're going to do a diagonal fold right there. For a female, you're going to go one third the distance down from the armpit towards the nipple. So it's just a little bit uh, less into the chest for a female. You are going to have to move the sports bra over and down a little bit to expose the site. The mid axillary site is going to be at the level of the xiphoid process of the sternum, so the bottom of the breastbone. You find that and you go around to the side of the individual on the right hand side and then you look for the center of the armpit and you go directly below that. So where the, uh, the lines from the, uh, the bottom of the breastbone and the center of the armpit intersect, that's where the skin fold site is going to be. Typically on a female, this is going to be right underneath where the sports bra strap is. So you just flip up the edge of the strap just a little bit so you can access the proper site uh, to do the skin fold. And this is going to be a uh, vertical skin fold site. So in order to do the subscapular skin fold site, you're going to go to the back of the individual and you're going to look at the right side of their back. All right, and so you're looking for the point of the scapula where you find the, the medial border near the uh, spine and the inferior border of the scapula and you're going to look for that point where they intersect right here. All right, so if you're having a difficulty uh, feeling that border, uh, what you can do is have the, the person take the right arm, put it back behind their back like this. And that's going to force the scapula to, to uh, go out towards you. And, and so you should be able to feel it much more readily. All right, so 
Make sure though that you have the person relax their arm back down and when they relax their arm, you're gonna see the scapula kind of come down and so you need to just trace with your fingers as that scapula is moving back downward to its resting position. All right, so once you find the appropriate site on the scapula, you're just gonna go about one inch or about two centimeters down and out away from it in a diagonal fashion and that's where the skin fold site's gonna be and this is going to be a diagonal skin fold. The super iliac skin fold site is going to be on the right hip of the individual. So what you need to do is you need to palpate and try to find the iliac crest. All right, so once you can trace where the iliac crest is, and sometimes this is difficult and you have to sort of estimate where it should be, but once you can palpate and trace that, um, you're gonna then look for where the front of the armpit is and go directly down from that. So it's gonna be sort of on uh, the, almost on the side of the individual. A lot of people you're gonna see do this far too um, close to the front of the individual. So it's kind of right where the, the front of the person and the side of the person meet is where the skin fold location is gonna be. But again, it's, it's about an inch or so off of the iliac crest in line with the front of the armpit and this is going to be a diagonal fold. The abdominal skin fold site is going to be about one inch or about two centimeters to the right of the belly button and this is going to be a vertical fold. The thigh skin fold is oftentimes the most difficult. The, the fat, the muscle, and the skin just sort of intertwine sometimes there but just do your best to separate them as much as you can and do the pinch. All right so the thigh skin fold site though is going to be halfway between the uh, inguinal crease on the right leg and the patella on the right leg. All right, so the inguinal crease is that crease that your leg makes um, when you lift your knee up. So it's the crease between your torso and your upper thigh, essentially. All right, so again, halfway between those two uh, on the midline of the front of the right leg, and you're gonna be doing a vertical skin fold here. All right, so you can see here the results of both our male and female participant. You can see that both trial one and trial two were within two millimeters of each other in all of the skin fold sites. So all we do is calculate the average skin fold measurement per site and we put that in our average column and then we just sum up the average column. So sum the average per skin fold site. All right, so for the male we get 113, for the female we get 105.5. And then we also need to have the square of that so you simply uh, multiply the sum times itself. Um, so we have the square of each of those there as well in the blue. Um, we're also going to need to have the age of the individuals. So I have the age up there, the, the male is 20, the female is 21. All right, so we're going to take the, the sum, the age, and the squared sum uh, from this and put it into our seven-site equations. All right, so this is the Jackson and Pollock seven-site equations. This is what you're going to see in the ACSM guidelines textbook. Um, and this is probably the most commonly used seven side e equations that are out there. All right, so with these equations, we're gonna be calculating body density, not body fat. So with body density, we're later going to calculate body fat. All right, so you can see here though, where the um, sum of the skin folds as well as where the squared sum of the skin folds go into each the male and female equations. All right, so if you go ahead and put those in and do the calculations, make sure that when you're doing these calculations, you keep all possible decimal points. Um, only round when you get to the final body fat percentage because any small rounding that you do here is gonna have major impacts on your final number. All right, so you can see uh, we calculate our body density for each one. It's 1.0 something with a bunch of decimal points. Um, and then we're gonna take that measurement and we're gonna put it into a equation to get body fat from body density. So the Siri equation is a very common one. There's several different versions of this type of equation out there, um, but we're just gonna use the Siri here. So you're gonna type in the body density into where uh, it says body density into this equation. And then from that, you can get the body fat percentage of each participant. So here, our male is around 15% body fat. Our female was around 20, 21% body fat. All right, so these measurements are um, fairly reliable uh, and repeatable, uh, but there is a little bit of error to it. This is an estimate-based test um, like most body fat tests are. And um, there's gonna be essentially a plus or minus of about three to 4% um, for each of these. So for instance, the person who is 15% uh, here, um, that if it's a plus or minus three, that means there's a 68% likelihood that their actual body fat percentage is somewhere between about 12 and 18%. 
All right, so um, all these measurements that again are going to have some error to them. That was a real quick overview on how to perform a skin fold uh, assessment for body fat percentage. This is a very tricky thing to do if you've never done it before. It does require a lot of practice to develop those skills. Um, but once you have those skills, it's a very inexpensive way of doing a body fat assessment uh, where you can do it essentially anywhere. So it's a, it's a field test more than a lab test. All right, so if you have any questions, or comments, please put those in the comment section below. Otherwise, please come back and watch another video. Thanks.